Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the future of Luminar Neo. There are two questions I get quite often. The first one is, hey, is Luminar Neo going to be replaced with a new app? Kind of like Luminar AI went to Luminar Neo a you know, year and a half ago. Is it going to get replaced with a new app? The answer to that is no. Luminar Neo is getting invested in and changing and new stuff is coming. And that answers the second question I get. Hey, is there new stuff coming to Luminar Neo? Yes, for sure, there is, and it's coming this fall. And in fact, the first update is coming really soon. So we're going to talk about the evolution of Luminar Neo in this video. I'm going to talk about kind of at a high level and show you some screenshot previews of what's coming. And I'm going to give you a demo of a new feature that's going to be here on August 31st. Let's get going. We're going to talk about the evolution of Luminar Neo because they are committed to the platform. And we're going to get new stuff, which is cool because I've been getting these questions a lot. Generative AI is coming to Luminar Neo. That's a, another question I get quite often. And of course, the answer is yes, it's coming. And it's coming in several different ways. And I think some really interesting and unique ways. The first way is gen erase. So generative AI based erasing, basically getting rid or removing unwanted objects using content aware tools to match the surrounding area and blend it in. So in this example, and I don't know how it works because to be clear, I've been briefed on what's coming. I haven't seen the product in action. That's new stuff that's going to be here this fall, but I don't have the exact timing on that yet either. So anyway, somehow you'll select things that are going to get erased and then they will get erased using generative AI fill for lack of a better term. Uh, here's another example where you can see the tarp above this hammock has been removed, but I can already imagine this is going to save me so much time and so much effort because there are countless photos where I have to go into a race or clone and stamp and do a bunch of kind of, let's call it manual work. That's effectively what it is to get rid of things that I don't want. But just think about removing cars from a city street or whatever it might be. If you shoot cities, if you're shooting landscapes and maybe there's something in the way, maybe some trees, whatever it might be. This is just opening up a lot of interesting possibilities for us here in the Luminar Neo. So I'm super excited about that. Another one that's a generative AI feature is called Scene Expand. And as this demo picture here shows, you can see in the bottom left, that's a kind of before. And on the upper right, the larger one, that's kind of the after. But it's essentially allowing you to, let's call it recompose your photo in some regard, expand the boundaries and kind of step beyond the aspect ratio and whatever it is that you actually cap captured. And I find that to be super interesting and useful because I can't tell you how many times I'm shooting, let's say a city street, and maybe there's a car or a pedestrian and they're kind of walking down a street or you know whatever it might be. And maybe I want to give them a little bit more space to walk into. Like maybe I capture them in the middle of the frame instead of further at the edge to give them more room to walk. I can see how you could use this to really make a difference in those kind of photos. Uh, not to mention landscapes, create larger looking kind of pano type looks. I think there's a lot of possibilities here. So I'm super excited about that. And then also scene swap is coming, another generative AI feature that basically allows you to replace elements in a photo and basically blend it seamlessly into the image. So here you can see this B was added to this photo of this flower. So again, lots of different ideas here. And it just makes me think of all the different things that you can do where, you know, this is in some regard, kind of like creating a composite um, I'm really eager to see how this works and uh, see what we can do with it because I think, again, there's a lot of possibilities. Now, another feature that's going to be incredibly used uh, by someone like me and I think incredibly useful is Water Enhancer. I can't tell you how many photos over the years where I've gone in and isolated the water with a mask and then come in with color tools and lighting tools and all kinds of things to make adjustments so that it fits with the rest of the photo or just looks better. This looks like it's going to be incredibly helpful for those kind of scenes. I can't wait to use Water Enhancer, but you can see the river there that was brown is now blue. Just makes for a much more pleasing image. Here's another example. Perfect example, in fact. Daytime, bright sun overhead. The water looks kind of washed out and it looks kind of faded and looks kind of almost brown. And then do a little enhancement to it and make the water look blue. Goes better with the sky. Just creates a more compelling photo. I'm going to use this tool all the time. So I can't wait to get my hands on that. And trust me, when I have my hands on these things and I'm able to share demos, I will be doing that here, of course. Another cool one is Neon and Glow, where you can add these interesting lighting effects on your photos. So there's a couple of examples there. And I used to do this kind of stuff years ago in a different product from a different company that's no longer made and no longer available. I just kind of quit doing it 
Now, not something I use all the time, but for certain photos, like I take a lot of street scenes at night, I could see using that a lot to just add some interesting lighting effects. I think that will be really cool and give us a lot of creative um, opportunities as well. So I'm excited about that one. And then Studio Light, and I have a beta copy of Luminar Neo with Studio Light. I'm going to show you that in a minute, but as you can see, it just basically mimics studio lighting effects. So you can take a photo that's shot on kind of a, let's call it flat light, and you can add interesting light and shadow effects into the image. I'll show you how that works, but I think you can do some really cool stuff with that as well. If you're a portrait photographer, this could potentially save you money uh, because maybe you don't need to buy as many lighting accessories for your studio, but if nothing else, it'll give you a creative, fun outlet to do something different and interesting and original with the portraits that you take. Now, this feature is coming on August 31st. It's the first one that's going to be out among all these other updates. And of course, like I said, I've got a beta copy. I'm going to show you how it works in just a minute. First, I want to talk about pricing. They've got a couple of different uh, pricing updates as well as a special offer. And by the way, if you take advantage of any of these offers, I humbly ask you to use the link down below. It is an affiliate link and they pay me a referral commission for anyone that purchases off of my link. You can also use my coupon code, which I'll put down below, to save some money. It's no extra cost to you and in fact, you save money using my coupon code, but it is a way that they compensate me for sending traffic to them. And, uh, and that's basically a way for you to give me free support because you know I'm going to be here making videos about all this stuff because I just love it and it's fun. So I'll be here making videos. I appreciate any support that you can give me. Um, if you're an existing subscriber, subscription plans, as long as you're a subscription a customer, you get everything that's uh, available. And so full access to everything as long as you're subscribed. No news there. Uh, for a lifetime license owner, this is a perpetual license owner, there's a creative journey pass for 23 and 2024. And as you can see, it's $39. I'm going to call this an upgrade cost essentially. So as you can see here, if you take advantage of this offer and you're a lifetime customer now for $39, you get access to the new generative AI features until August 16th of 2024. So basically a year, you also get the platform feature upgrades. That's the new features like studio light, neon and glow and water enhancer. And because they're core products, they're not extensions, they're core filters or tools inside Luminar. You'll get access to them forever because you're buying the product outright. And then any other updates and features that come out before August 16th of 2024, you'll get those as well. You do not get extensions because extensions are a separate purchase. And so that continues to be a separate purchase for anyone that just owns the, uh, the product without the extension uh, pack. Now, you can also get a great deal on the annual pro subscription for just $49 in the first year. I'm personally a fan of subscriptions, but I know that some of you are not for various reasons. If you subscribe, you get everything, including the extensions. And again, $49 for the first year with a renewal price of $99 each year. That gives you access to everything as long as you stay subscribed. I personally think that's a great deal. But again, if you don't like subscriptions, you have an option here to do essentially a one-time purchase upgrade to get the new stuff. And I think that's going to be, uh, that's frankly a pretty good deal. $39 seems really reasonable to me. Now, I do want to point out one thing, and that's this asterisk down below. To keep getting new features, this is for anyone that is a perpetual or lifetime license owner. To keep getting new features and access to generative AI features, a customer is going to have to purchase the next season pass in 2024. So effectively, you get this until August 16th of 2024, but next year, they'll have another upgrade and the reason why is generative AI features have to go to the cloud to download these elements and, and make, uh, you know, have, have that connection. Um, anytime they're going to the cloud, they're basically hitting infrastructure and Skylum is paying for use of that infrastructure. So they have underlying costs that continue anytime you're using generative AI. And that's why you would have to purchase an upgrade. It's not uh, something that you could use for free forever. So just keep that in mind. And then also, this is a handy little chart. Essentially, they've got three different subscriptions, uh, monthly, a 12-month, or a 24-month. As long as you're subscribed, and you can see the pricing there, you get everything forever as long as you subscribe. If you want to be a lifetime customer and you just want to buy it outright and it's new to you, in other words, you're not upgrading from the previous version, it's $249 US dollars. That gets access to the three new Gen AI features until August 16th of 2024. You get access forever to any... Uh, non-Gen AI features that are added to the product between now and August 16th of 2024. And then you also get all eight extensions that are available now. And so that's a pretty good deal. And again, if you take advantage of these, 
I, I love it if you take advantage of them via my, uh, my link down below. Again, that's a free way for you to provide support for me. And I thank you very much for that because, like I said, I'll be here making videos about it. And that helps me uh, keep the lights on. Um, while I'm at it, I'm going to jump in and show you Studio Light. Here's a uh, photo that I, I got off of Unsplash. And um, I just want to show you Studio Light. It's sitting right here right now. I think of it as a portrait tool, and in fact, it only works on portraits, at least today. Um, it may move down here to portraits. I don't know. It seems like it would, but I don't really know. Again, I'm in beta, so things may change. I just want to point that out. But if you click on Studio Light, you get a few options here, and nothing's been applied yet. But the first thing I'm going to do is just drop the exposure, and that's dropping the exposure of the entire photo. And the reason I did that is because... I want to add, uh, I'm going to drag the amount slider and that will help the lighting effects that I'm going to add show up better. So you just drag the amount and as I do that, you will see these uh, lighting effects start to come in uh, across her face. Now I'm at 80, so that's kind of high. I don't necessarily recommend going that high. It may be better to do something kind of subtle like you know, 30 or 40. I'm higher just to make it easier for you to see in this video. You can change the depth and essentially move this around so that these lighting effects are coming in at uh, an angle and that sort of thing. So you can see as you move that around, you got a lot of interesting, like that's really cool right there. I'm not really a portrait photographer, but this kind of stuff is super fun to play with. But with that uh, depth center, I just moved it over there and basically changed how the light is being applied to her as the subject. Now you've also, instead of dots, you could come down here and say, hey, I want strips and I want to do that. Or you could just say none. You've got some options there where you're just getting the light without the actual uh, pattern, for lack of a better word. I'm gonna go back to strips. I think that's kind of cool. To be clear, I'm not going through every one of these sliders. There's a lot to talk about. I just wanna give you a high level overview here. But I think one of the really cool things in this tool is that you've got red, green, and blue. That's what RGB are for. So as you drag these, you're basically taking that light and it's though as you added color to it. So I think that's pretty interesting. And red, the opposite of red is cyan. So you can either go red or you can go cyan. That's pretty cool. Uh, you got green, and the opposite of green is magenta. So you can go green or you can go kind of the magenta look. And blue, you've got blue, and the opposite of which is yellow. So I could go blue or I could go yellow. So you got a lot of flexibility there to kind of move things around and just make some interesting color shifts on your subject and have a lot of fun doing it. So that's a quick overview of Studio Light. It's a fun, interesting new feature for portrait photographers that's coming on August 31st to Luminar Neo. And you can pretty quickly make a huge impact. And that's before and that's after. And one other thing to think about is, just like with other tools, you can close it. It's on the model, right? The lighting effect has been added. I could open it again and place a different lighting effect in a different portion of the photo and have basically stack these if I wanted to. I won't be doing that here, but I wanted to point out that you can pretty quickly Take a photo from something like that to something like that with interesting lighting effects using Studio Light. That's essentially how it works. There's a lot more to talk about. I'll be back soon to talk about more of it, but wanted to cover that at a high level and let you know what's coming and when. So Studio Light on August 31st, everything else coming between now and the end of the year as I understand it. Um, as I get more concrete dates, I'll be sharing that. And of course, as I get updated beta copies on these new features, I'll be sharing those as well. Thanks for watching, my friend. I hope that helps. Again, if you take advantage of any offers, affiliate link down below. Thanks for your support. I really appreciate it. I'll be back soon with more videos. You guys take care, and until next time, adios.